Alright, welcome to A Game for Your Thoughts. Today we're talking about The Last of Us. So The Last of Us is a major staple in the survival horror genre, so I decided to take this game on for my play series, and you can check that out here on YouTube. I'll have a link for it at the end of the video, or you can probably find it on my channel. Go over and check that out. I played through the whole game, it was a great time, so go and enjoy that. So the story of The Last of Us follows a man named Joel and his companion Ellie as they travel across the United States to find a cure for the zombie apocalypse. And in this world, a fungus has overtaken humans and turned them into these fungus zombie things. And so the zombies have kind of overtaken the world and the government is struggling super hard to hold on to control. That's a very basic run through because there's a lot going on in this game and lots of really awesome crazy scenarios happen but I don't want to go into that because that'd be a spoiler and we don't want that. So the story of this game is easily the best part. The story is phenomenal and the best thing of all is the performances and the betrayals of Joel and Ellie from uh, Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson. They do an awesome job and their dynamic is incredible. They're the best part of this game is just their characters and the way they interact and their bond and it's so great. Just this story this game tells is the best part and it absolutely makes this game worth playing just for the story. But like I said, the best part is the interactions between Joel and Ellie. They're just such great characters and at first they don't mesh very well but after some time they form to grow a bond and it's really really great. They just mesh so well at the end and it's awesome and seeing that journey from where they start and where it is at the end of the game is just so incredible. It's so well done and it's just so well written. Another thing this story does really really well is the pacing. It does a great job of holding a good pace of having super dark, intense, and just zombie themes to all of a sudden have some really fun light-hearted experiences and this game just does a great job of blending the two of them. And you go from one to the other and it doesn't seem too drastic and it doesn't seem unnatural. There's sometimes when you're on a very intense scene it kind of just cuts and then it picks right back up on a nice not as intense relaxing scene and it's really different but they handle it so well and it does just such a great job of this transition and it's never jarring or it never feels out of place it always feels very natural and it's always just builds that excitement of those exciting scenes because like I want to see what happens next I want to see where this goes and it just does a great job of holding a great pace the entire time through you never get bored and you never feel like it drags on at all and it just has a great timing and pace and everything just blends together to make such a great and fantastic story the story has lots of really big moments, but of course I don't want to spoil them, but they're very big and they're very exciting and just the writing and the performances elevate these big moments. Yet again, these performances, Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson kill it. They do such a great job on just making these characters feel like real people. They just make them seem elevated and you really, really feel for these characters and when something bad happens, you feel bad for them and you can be like, oh, that's rough. Just because their performance is so well done that it's hard not to feel bad for them. And it just is so well executed and I have nothing but praises for the performances for all the characters not even just Joel and Ellie everyone else too does a great job and there's one of my favorite voice actors in video games and this game makes a great appearance and it's so awesome it's one of the best parts of the game and I loved it and I was so excited when I figured out it was him and I was like oh yes I don't want to say who it is because I don't want to spoil it and I don't want to say the situation because I don't want to spoil it I want you to figure it out and be as excited as I was because I was so stoked because I didn't realize it was him until the end credits and I was like it's so cool and like it's so great and so I was so stoked to see that in here and so I just want you to go check out this story just for the game the performances the story the writing everything comes together to tell such an amazing story that I think is absolutely worth checking out this is a survival horror game so it is not easy and you can up and lower the difficulty depending on how much of a challenge you want it to be I kind of like to play in the middle it's usually a good, good balance between being difficult and not too difficult but this game is still really difficult and fighting hordes of the undead and the living are not very easy when it comes to uh, resources and fighting and combat and there is little th problems here and there that I do want to address one thing that this game does that I found different from other survival horror games that I've played is its use of stealth and it does a great job of having a great stealth system that makes stealth really, really matter. When you want to do stealth, you have to do it right. And if you don't do it right, you're going to burn through some of your precious ammo. And it's hard. And it's really, it just makes you really strategic. you got to really think about the environment, what resources you do have and what resources you don't have. And you just really have to assess where the enemies are, how many there are, things like that. And it's really, really well done. And it's really exciting, too. And it's probably my favorite dynamic of the gameplay is just the way the stealth works. And it works really, really well. But my biggest complaint is that they don't have like an enemy alertness meter well it does make it pretty realistic it was kind of frustrating from a gameplay standpoint where it's just like i didn't see that coming it's just like they saw me and it just there was nothing i can do but yet again makes it really realistic but not my favorite gameplay aesthetic so it'd have been cool if that was like an on off switch or like something for like the hardcore mode that they turned off the enemy awareness so maybe in a future sequel i would love to see that but when stealth breaks, you're going to have to go out to your guns. And one thing that was really unfortunate is the shooting was not my most favorite as it was very slow and tight while your enemies are very fast and quick. So trying to aim and shoot are both very slow processes while your enemies are moving pretty much full force at you, whether they're running at you 
or they're taking cover while others are coming at you. There's a lot going on in the combat. When you start shooting, things slow down a lot in your end, but their end, they're still moving pretty quick. So trying to line up those perfect shots that really, really count because ammo is very scarce in this game. So making each shot count was really hard because of just how slow the shooting is. So I wouldn't mind to see the shooting a little bit more tuned up, make it a little bit faster, but not like crazy fast like Doom or Wolfenstein, but just that the smoothing was a little bit more fluid, that it moved faster, that made lining up those perfect shots not as difficult that it should be. And it was just fine. It didn't ruin the combat. It just made it maybe a little bit more difficult than I would it was expected it to be. And it also maybe elevated the combat to a little bit more realistic and than I probably would have wanted it to be. Yet again, from a gaming standpoint, it's like cool. It's like, wow, that's really realistic. But from like a playing aspect, you're like, okay, that's kind of tedious and really annoying. So it just kind of depends on what your opinion, your opinion is on that. But for me, it was a little tedious, but didn't totally ruin the experience. But this really matters because resources are really scarce and you have to make each shot count. But like most survival horror games, the enemies take so many shots to go down. And like, it reminds me of Resident Evil 2, the remake, where it's just like you're pounding headshot after headshot into some enemies. And it's just like, oh my gosh. It's not too bad until a little bit later in the game, but at the later ends of the game, you're still pretty low on ammo. You don't get more ammo as you go on, unless you're really good at conserving it. But just at the end of the game, you're using so much ammo on some of these guys, and it's pretty tedious and annoying. While there are resources out there to make your guns a little bit more efficient, it was unfortunate because I never felt like any of them really made much of a difference. I felt like if I were to reduce recoil and fire rate and things like that, I never felt like it really mattered. I never felt like I got better as the game went on, which was unfortunate but it didn't yet again didn't ruin the experience that was most of my complaints i had about this game is they were a little tedious and annoying but never ruined the experience this game was amazing there was so much fun to be had and while these little teeny things that i'm kind of pointing out i'm almost nitpicking at this point and i feel bad for doing that but it's just things i felt and i just want to address them and be like hey if this is a problem for you it was a problem for me maybe it was for you if not great that's awesome i'm glad you enjoyed it but one thing this game does really, really well is the crafting. I'm usually not a big fan of crafting in games. I like collecting resources, but like the crafting mechanics themselves are usually one of my favorites. But this game does it really, really well. The way your crafting works is Joel has his backpack, and he takes his backpack off, and you have to like dig through your resources and build and craft tools and uh, items to use later on. And I liked this dynamic a lot because it added a lot of attention to the battles because the action doesn't pause when you pull off your backpack when you're in your backpack the game is still moving around you so if you run out of ammo with one of your weapons and you want to switch it out you're gonna to have to find a good spot to take cover because you can't just switch it with a push of a button you have to pro open your backpack and pull out a different gun it was a really really cool mechanic that i really liked and it just added a lot of tension and realism that wasn't tedious it was really difficult it added a layer of difficulty but it never got annoying it was always just like wow this is intense and awesome and i liked it but once you open up your backpack, you can also build your tools that you need for combat, such as Molotov cocktails, bombs, smoke bombs, or health packs, things like that. And I really liked how this system worked because you only had like five or six categories of resources and several items shared those same resources. So you had to pick and choose what kind of resources you wanted to use in the fight. My favorite of all was alcohol and rags were two resources, but med kits and Molotov cocktails both used those. And it was a great dynamic because med kits healed you up, got you more health, but Molotov cocktails were a very efficient weapon to use in combat. So it was a very tricky dynamic of like, which do I need more? Which do I want more? And sometimes it would pay off really, really well. You'd be like, oh, I'm so glad I made a Molotov cocktail right there. Or you'll make a Molotov cocktail like, I really wish I had a med kit right now, but I don't have any more resources. It was a really cool dynamic that I really, really liked. And I hope to see them maybe even build upon this in, uh, in the second one and maybe make it a better. I thought it was really great, but I could see them making it even better and making it even more enjoyable. But I don't know. It was just really, really cool. So I played the PlayStation 4 remaster of The Last of Us, and this game looks really, really good. I was just playing my basic PS4, and I never had any crashes or freezes, so that was great. Technically, it ran just fine. Graphically, it was really, really stunning. Naughty Dog always makes good-looking games, as shown by Uncharted series. Those games look awesome. But in comparison to the Uncharted series, where those are bright, really fun, luscious games where you have lots of environmental stuff going on, The Last of Us is in the same way, but on the opposite spectrum. The dark and dreary Last of Us feel of the, uh, the zombie apocalypse is really good. It looks good and it feels good. Just the environment that these uh, worlds create is so good. The title of The Last of Us is very fitting. It just, you feel very isolated and you feel very alone and it works really, really well. And all the environments you explore are very varied and they all look really, really good. Rundown city landscapes are very dreary and creepy. 
old rundown towns are really just lonely and empty but also it's covered in like bright foliage and it looks really nice and it's just kind of like has like a hint of life and greenery to it and it looks really good but then also the dark scary caves and sewer tunnels you go through are really dark and really creepy looking especially once you get to the fungus filled ones where there's like spores in the airs those ones are really creepy because they're just so dark and then the fungal atmosphere it builds some great tension and that's what this game does really really well with its environments is build good tension with the environments it also elevates the gameplay because then you have to take your environment into consideration when you're in some of these fights. And the character models look really, really good too. And this is helped yet again by the performances. As far as I'm aware of, this is a motion capture thing. And they look really, really good. It it looks good. Um, they've aged a little bit. Like it, You can tell there's some aging there. I mean, this game came out like five years ago, the remaster. And so you can definitely tell there's some age there. But overall, it still looks pretty good. The character models move and interact well with the world. I didn't have any problems there. So that was really, really cool. And it just really elevated the experience making it that much better so in the end should you play the last of us yeah this game is amazing the story it tells is just incredible the performances the writing the pace everything most of the story is just so well done and i had very little to no complaints about the story it was probably one of the greatest video gaming stories of all time and troy baker is one of my favorites and he kills it and ashley johnson kills it as ellie she was such a fun character and i want to see more of and i can't wait for the last of us too just to see how they build on these characters and where they go from here the gameplay is a very fun survival horror experience. The crafting and the stealth were two of my favorite aspects. While the shooting was a little slow and tight, wasn't my most favorite, it worked and it got the job done. And that's what this game needed to do is get the job done. But the stealth and the crafting just elevate this gameplay to the next part and make it enjoyable on top of the story. And it all just blends together. The graphics look good, the environments are awesome, and the characters and just everything is so well done. I have most praises for this game. My few complaints are very minimal and very nitpicky. And just things that I wasn't totally a fan of, but it didn't ruin the experience at all. I would not, absolutely never play this game again. I loved it so much that I would play it again, absolutely. I might even want to just play it again right now, just because it's so fun. And the story is just so amazing. And there's just so many great moments and character pieces and just things like that. And I would absolutely recommend you play The Last of Us. If you're looking for a great character building adventure, if you're looking for a great survival horror experience, or if you're just looking for a good game in general, The Last of Us is absolutely worth checking out and I would highly recommend it. So that's my review for The Last of Us. I hope you enjoyed this game as much as I did because this game's awesome. So if you want to watch me play it, I'll put that up here, wherever that is. Um, and then you can go over and check that out. I have a full playthrough of the game and it was so much fun. And so go over and check that out. Um, I'm currently playing Prey and Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Frights, so go and check those out too. Those have been a lot of fun. I really enjoyed those, so go and check those out. Um, also, in the end of October of 2019, if you're watching this video in the future, this won't matter, but um, October 31st, I'm doing my Halloween stream. I'm playing Resident Evil 2. I'm really excited for that one, so go over and check that out. And always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get notified every time I post a new video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really do appreciate all the support I'm getting. And please, as always, I'm very open to... Uh, feedback and comments, things like that. And I want to hear from you guys. What are you thinking? What do you think about The Last of Us? Things like that. So let me know down below in the comments and I will catch you guys next time on A Game for Your Thoughts. Thanks for watching.